Hello and welcome to the Game Brew Podcast, episode 60. I am your host, Ian Rayner Richard, and I'm here with Chris Zeratul Rights. My life for ire. Dan Samir Duran Rots. I know Duran Duran. I don't know Samir Duran. <laughs> he's like the he's like the double agent guy. And Will Abathur Shell. Make flesh great again. <laughs> the first what? half of the book. I don't know what this is in reference to. Starcraft, um, my dude. Starcraft. Uh, oh, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm, You're not a crafty boy? I'm, a, I'm not a crafty boy. Well, I'm a crafty boy, and I'll talk about that later, but also. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Yeah, on the first half of the podcast, we'll talk about seasonal shifts in games, and in the second half, we'll discuss direct and indirect control of characters. But first, it's time for a beer. I have to Chris, pick one. what are we drinking this week? So it's, you know, like the heat of the summer. If you're on the East Coast, it's real hot. Like, I think it's in Baltimore, it was like a heat exit 110. So obviously there's some seasonal changes going on here. So with that in mind, we wanted to get some seasonal beers. Seasons so of I got the beers. a delicious beer from Duclaw um, mm-hmm, called mm-hmm. Gosa O's because they're it's a, it's a Baltimore place and it's, it says Gosa Ooh. Gosa, Gosa O's. O's. O's is the the local the Orioles are the local um, baseball team. <laughs> that took a oh, really long oh. time. <laughs> What's that sport Local, called? Um, There's a ball. It's like cricket ball. stick ball, right? <laughs> It's yeah. like stickball, but the stick bat's ball. bigger. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of there's a bunch of kids in half pants playing it. <laughs> right. Uh, They're adults. There's a there's an old timey umpire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Listen here, kids. Uh, you see? Nah, you see. Why give us back on ball, <laughs> Mister? Um, and I, I am drinking the uh, Lord Hobo Museum, which is a triple IPA that they release seasonally only in the spring. So this came out in March, so it's a nice spring. Ooh, beer. Wait, did you you can get Lord Hobo brewing? Can, stuff it's now? like sometimes I can get it, sometimes I I can oh, usually okay. get Boom Sauce. It's pretty around, but it's a triple <sighs> IPA, which is like scary oh and also does like, it make you pretty happy what season it's it, what I mean, season does that represent spring. it smells like straight spring. hops i gotta tell you and it's, it's called lord hobo okay. that's, that's the, the brewery. that's a brewery that's the, the brewery, oh, called okay. the brewery company. does it the have brewery. a hint of pickles um i'm not picking up any pickles Ooh, it's very fruity it's a hazy ipa so i guess i should have expected that yeah, I've been kind of really nice. into them just because they're so juicy. Like tropical fruits, very juicy. juicy. It's like a citrus cool. explosion in my mouth, and I'm loving it. You Sweet. would love that. Um, the uh, <laughs> I, I'm drinking. I kind of I kind of picked a bunch of like the standard drinking beers that I do during those times of year. So right now I'm drinking a High Lie India Pale Ale from Cigar City Brewing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's like my that's like one of my summer beers. I don't know Can why. It's can? just one of the ones I like to. It's. Uh, Looks like this. It is yeah, yeah, yeah. to describe oh, yeah. to the listeners at home. It's green and it's uh, orange. Um, and, and he said uh, high lie, it but it looks high-li. like jai lie. Yeah, Just so I had one of those when I was in the North Carolina, and those things are happy as book. Like that is they a are, but beer. it's yeah, it's still refreshing though, which I kind of like. So that's why it's one of my summer. I don't picks. know how they put all those IBUs in one can. <laughs> I also yeah. have a good summer pick. What's your summer I pick? I have trusty old. You guys know me. What am I drinking for summer? Is it a Bud Light? No. I was going to go with Blue, Blue Moon. Moon. What the hell's wrong with you guys? It's a Sam Adams Summer Ale. Oh, oh. that's right. America. <laughs> Sam Adams Summer Ale. Which, if you, have, if you have not had a Sam Adams Summer Ale and you like beer, pause. Right, no, just plug your headphones in and take us to the grocery store right now. And or the liquor get, store if you're in that liquor, kind of wherever. situation. Just, yeah. Go somewhere and get a Sam Adams Summer Ale. Get all the beers, but start with the Sam Adams Summer Ale. If you're going to start with a well, seasonal beer, beers. that's I mean, what you need to start we, with. We The Game Brew does not want you to spend all of your money on beer. Please. <laughs> Please <laughs> save some for the video games. <laughs> save some for the video games. All right, so we've got what two springs and two summers. Yeah, yeah so we'll have to do some winters and I've falls. Got, I've got a follow. Oh, so next, so wait, winter's coming. Winter is coming probably in the second Actually, half. The second half of this episode. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> totally. Um, but speaking of video games, yeah, yeah. <laughs> speaking, I was speaking of video games. Uh, I uh, I'm still playing way too much Slay the Spire. I can't help myself. I'm I'm really it's a problem. I've managed to finish. To do damage to the spire with two of the uh-huh. three character types, but not the third yet. So 
Mm. So you haven't slayed the spire. I have not yet slayed the spire. I'm still working on it. Uh, I'm about 25, it. 26 hours in on this game, and it's it's got its hooks in me deep. It's not it's not a good thing. Cool. Okay. Put a Can I talk about you. some roguelikes? Would you like me to I talk about some roguelikes? Talk about some roguelikes, roguelikes on us. Because apparently that's what I love. I, I wouldn't. Because I, I don't want to hear about that. Okay, never mind. F- fuck you guys. Bye. <laughs> no, wait. It's your birthday. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. It's my goddamn birthday. <laughs> also, happy birthday um, to Dan. Yeah, happy birthday yeah, to Dan. Happy birthday, Dan. Thank you. The big uh, three. Thank you. I am, He's a big boy I now. No, I am 25, <laughs> if, if anybody asks. So this year's a big 3-0 for you, Dan? Yeah. It's, yeah, it I'm is. 30. Okay. Yeah, didn't you see his I'm banner? 30, in 30 and picture? flirty. 30 and flirty. Yeah, 30, flirty, and thriving. That's me. I think, um, <laughs> I think you're going to yeah, love we went out, Yeah, we went out to bars. Like, we had it, we had, because I was wearing a sash, I was wearing a sash that said 30, flirty, and thriving out to some breweries in Westchester. And uh, whenever we went out to all these places, that's why my voice is so low today, because <laughs> I'm very Because Dan just woke up. Uh, no, no, I've been up for a while. Uh, but the uh, but the rule was anytime, because we kept accidentally doing this voice, like sorority girl voice. <laughs> yeah. So the rule was... Anytime you said anything in the sorority girl voice, you have to say it again in a very low manly voice. <laughs> and it just sounds way worse. You'd be like, oh, my God, where are my bitches at? And then you say, oh, my God, where are my bitches at? <laughs> That's awesome. Very different mood. Uh, That's very different different mood. Two very different messages. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but back to video games. This is a podcast about video games. Right? I think so. I believe yeah. that's okay. the topic. Yeah. Okay, um, but I've been playing a couple roguelikes. The first one I've been playing is called Moonlighter. It was in one of our Humble Bundles. Mm-hmm. And I played that a couple great. months ago. It's, uh, I really like it. It's mm-hmm. great. It's, cool. It's like a, it's, it's called Moonlighter because for two reasons. One, your shop is called Moonlighter. And also, you are a shop owner who moonlights as an adventurer. So it's kind of like, it's like double meaning kind of stuff. Cool. It's pretty neat. But basically, it's kind of like you would hate it, Will, because it's like a roguelike, oh, okay. but also Stardew Valley. Oh, yep. Because you have to like collect things, no. sell things, no. and the things that you sell get more. Like if you sell too many of them, then the demand goes down. So hey, it's, hey Dan, it's, what was that game that you list. mentioned that Will doesn't like? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I owe so much money. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that Will still has thing. to play that from a bet that he made back, yeah, he back does. in the day. Yeah, he he play said that he would that play out. it. And some fans have been pointing it out that you haven't oh, played it, Will, and bastard. they're very upset. And yeah. they're not they're not mad, they're disappointed. That's right. Oh, yeah, I think that's, that's almost worse. <laughs> that hurts. That hurts. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, but, continue, uh, Dan. <laughs> but no, but Moonlighter's good. You should play it. If you haven't played it, it's uh, or you like roguelikes, it's very well done. It's pretty simple, but also kind of can get complicated as your shop grows. You is it really a roguelike just selling things? though? Because you're not. I guess. Yeah. I guess because the, the the dungeon resets every day. Yeah, the dungeon changes every day, okay. and if yeah. you die, you lose all your stuff. So, so that's that's what they would refer to as a rogue light. Because light. even though you do lose all your stuff and you lose a lot of progress, like your shop, the upgrades that you make to the shop and the town still persist. So yeah. And then the other one that I'm playing is uh, Cadence of Hyrule. That's Ooh. the Crypt of the Necrodancer, uh, Legend of Zelda mm-hmm. cool. uh, spinoff, which is really good. It's really fun. It's pretty addicting. Also, you sit there. It's hard. You kind of start. It's hard, but you start bobbing your head while you're playing it, too. So you're like playing it. It's like. This isn't the song from that game because we don't want to get sued. But uh, yeah, it's totally fun. Um, I paid full price for it, but I really just wanted to play it and have more Legend of well, Zelda. Full stuff price in is my only life. like 25, 25. Yeah, so 25 it's not bucks. Like, so yeah, it's not bad. It's just fun. It's kind of just funny because the very first, <laughs> you're just the you're the girl. I forget what the main character from Cadence of High, uh, no from Crypt of the Necrodancer is, but she's in it. Oh yeah, uh, for like ten seconds, and then Navi comes. She's like, hey, listen. <laughs> like, oh, no. yeah. The beginning <laughs> of that game is super charming. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty cute. But yeah, those are what I've been playing. Cool. Right on. Wheel? Uh, I have been playing Final Fantasy VII on Switch, actually. Oh, interesting. I'll leave it a goodie. Okay. Yeah. And how are you feeling it. about that? Does it look as dated as uh, as Chris and Dan think it looks? I mean, yeah, it's, it's a dated game for sure, but it's it's just good fun. I was just nostalgic feeling nostalgic. or classic? <laughs> We did that. That was last episode. Classic, damn it. Uh, Well, I think that's both. (laughs) Okay, we're not. We're not having this conversation again. 
um, are you enjoy- are you having fun with it? And how far into it are you? Oh yeah, I'm having a great time with it. Uh, I'm at the. I'm not very far into it. I'm at the sector five reactor, the second reactor that you have to blow up. Do do. And uh, yep, do, yep, that's it. Do, we go do. underground and all that. And, um, yeah. Starting on with the Turks a little bit. Um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Molly and I are actually talking about going through and playing a game together, though, as a new thing and mm. doing a couples gaming session of Red Dead because neither one of us have started it, but we're thinking about playing it only when we're side by side on the couch and we can share the controller. But whoever's got the controller makes the decisions at that point in time, but we don't pl- there's no independent playing. It's just only when we're together. Mm. I've done some of that, that with Katie um, for certain games, and that's it, it, it is fun. It makes it a way to play a one player game with two people. Which is nice. Yeah, Dan, there's a there's a game coming out from the people who did uh, Until Dawn. Yeah. Mm. Called Man, Man of Medan. And it has like a party mode where or like a or a watch party mode or something like that, where you all make decisions like everybody has, oh, uses right. their cell phone to like vote into what yeah, decision they want to make, like it. which is kind of interesting. I like that. That's I cool. think that looks cool. Me and Chris were doing a little bit of that on uh, SWOTOR. Yeah. Also. Yeah. So, I was about to mention uh, that. The other thing I would say, Will, is don't forget about Div- Divinity Original Sin and Original Sin 2, where they like built for. I, it, I, I tried that with her. She hated it. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. Like 10 minute combat game. is way too slow for her. She's not that slow analytical type with gaming. So hmm. if anyone online would like to play Divinity Original Sin with me, I still have not beaten it because no one will play it with me. I will play it with you. I own okay. that shit. It's no, fun. don't make that promise to him. I. Don't play with him. What? what? <laughs> yeah, don't um, play with Will. Nobody play with Will. <laughs> okay. I'm just kidding. Play with Will. Okay, play Chris, what have you been playing? I've been playing. Well, I beat another game. Oh my God, Chris! Jesus, you're fucking ruthless right now. I've been well. I've been I've been knocking out a bunch of single player sh- things. Um, so Hellblade: Senua's Sacrifice um, was a game that we got in Humble Bundle, um, yeah, and I've been wanting month. to play it for a little while. And I was I was interested because of the things I had heard about it and like how it simulates psychosis, um, and then just kind of it's. The game itself is like it's not particularly hard. I mean, it's a little hard. Some like I had to replay a couple sections of it, but it's more about it's not as much about like really good game mechanics as much as it is the experience and how it makes you feel. So like there's a lot of time in that game where you are being talked at by voices in your head. So if you had a headset on, it would be voices just constantly talking Mm. to you right next to your ears so it it kind of gets it kind of breaks you down sometimes too because there's points where like they're they're saying things like oh she's she can't find it she can't do it oh she's she's lost why is she even trying and so like it kind of it kind of brings you down a little bit and there's certain points where you kind of have to just remind yourself that this is a video game and it's not reflective of you but um just some, one of the boss fights you're you're constantly going in and out with the darkness so like it's really hard to see the boss you're actually fighting um mm. to dodge out of the way and then like there will be flashes of like flashbacks to to bad things that happen to you constantly during that fight so it just it, it can be a very intense experience and if it was longer i don't know if it would have been as good like mm. I, I think the the length it was about seven hours i think yeah oh, so not super long not super long but if it was longer, it would have been, I think, a little too much. But also the gameplay itself wasn't varied enough to keep it interesting that long outside of the psychological experience. Yeah, I think cool. I think one of the big takeaways from games like that <clears throat> is they really do need to make sure they're um, keeping track of the pace and uh, like how much content there is and how long that justifies the game being around um, before it changes to something else, just like the seasons right so there's a rhythm to the months and the seasons on the planet the seasons come and go as the earth turns and gets closer to and farther away from the sun um and there's a a season to gaming as well and so uh we just i wanted to ask the question um are there certain games that we play during certain seasons absolutely no let's move on (laughs) dude speak for yourself thanks for coming to the first half of the show yeah (laughs) boom done i definitely do okay go on 
I, I, I feel that I feel the same. Actually, there are certain okay. games that yeah. I only play at certain times of the year. Every Christmas, it would, like clockwork, it never fails. Every Christmas, I hop on and I play some Counter Strike, largely because Dad still plays Counter Strike, and that's mm-hmm. time I have to actually sit around and play with him. But um, I don't know what it is about Christmas, but Christmas and Counter Strike just kind of go hand in hand for me. It's like <laughs> lima beans and tuna fish. It's great. Uh, what? Jingle, oh, what? jingle bell, jingle bells, the terrorist smell. The rot, then you shoot them, seek a black. Yeah, pretty you know, much, but like because it's Counter Strike, you gotta wow. sing it with an what angry a, Russian accent. That classic <laughs> hit. I yeah. didn't have to insult my mother. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. It's like, yes, my mother. Brings Christmas yes, cheer quite like mother insults. Yeah, um, mother insults. Strike, yeah. 12 year olds insulting my mother on the internet. For me, it's it's the games, the very popular games that From Software uh, makes and publishes that I play Ooh. in the summer. Like um, what? What are they called? Uh, what are they they're like um, poorly lit uh, uh, astral projections of oneself. <laughs> okay, right. I it's do interesting. enjoy poorly lit astral projections. <laughs> so I was playing poorly lit astral projections three um, <laughs> this it. summer, and I beat the first one also during a summer because they just demand so much like time for me like i actually have to invest mm-hmm. time in them every day in, in order to enjoy them and then there's only one right. time a year when i can really do that and that's the summer so that's when yeah. i play those guys games i will also say that oh yeah chris i, I was going to kind of mention I, i'm kind of the opposite as far as time i feel like i'm much more busy during the summer so i'm not able to do as much like Same. long sessions of, of playing mm-hmm. so like my long sessions of playing are in the winter so i kind of dig mm-hmm. more into first person one player games more in the winter because I'm able to devote more time then. You're busier with more like social stuff in the summer, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's what, just making sure that's what just you're traveling doing. and then, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, is that like, is that what Friends is? <gasps> is that TV show? No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the TV show, but like real people. Like, like real you, ones. Yeah. Like those exist? Yes. Oh my God. Yes. I know. We're, that's amazing. No, I'm the same way as Chris though. I, I feel like in the summer, I don't really get, I have not had time to play which is why i'm like digging into roguelikes now is because i don't have to spend a whole lot of time with it you know sometimes it's just running through like one or two things and then i go into the next one mm. i'm still gonna beat i still haven't beat sick i've beaten 99 percent of sekiro and i i'm like i, no, I can't get Dan. the last boss it's so hard oh that's it's so, so sad. hard dude. So that would be Dan, a, nice, a nice fat five points for you it's a long game so know, dan is there five like points. a specific game that like rolls around every like for me it's counter-strike is there a game that rolls around every year for you or for <sighs> anybody else so far i'm the only one with a specific I mean, game well i don't know because there's nothing that i really play seasonally because it's kind of whenever the mood strikes me i just kind of play whatever so what i was going to say is that there are also games that like release seasonally which is kind of interesting so mm-hmm. games that tend to iterate like call of duty usually releases in the fall sometimes like madden, september NBA. august november yeah right MLB. madden always releases in in august like right before football season gets really busy um <clears throat> and i think in looking into this a little bit um it seems like a lot of the first person shooter games tend to release in the fall uh and a lot of the Mm -hmm. big titles tend to release in the fall to kind of be ready for a christmas season which is sort of interesting and then as the year goes on what happens is the the titles get like they go from triple a to like double a to like indie releases and and that is kind of seasonal as well which i think is interesting so i end up playing more seasonal seasonally indie games i feel like in the uh in the winter like the early Hmm. winter january february i feel like for me with certain things that happen during the summer versus the winter so um i'll be more interested in playing like roller coaster tycoon or planet coaster in the summer because that's when i'm actually being able to go to an amusement park or seeing like oh, the new rides that are coming connected out. to your real life stuff <clears throat> yeah so like i'll have more of an interest in playing those games after i go to an amusement park because i was like i want right. to keep doing that right like, like in the uh, summer for me like i play a lot of surgeon simulator because it's when i'm most likely to be dismembering bodies right yeah that, and that makes total exactly. sense yeah or like yeah. um with baseball like I'm, I'm more likely to play out of the park baseball during the summer probably because it's baseball season and it's all what is out of the park baseball it's a baseball it's a, simulator it's a baseball like game. it's yeah. like you've heard of like football manager 2019 or whatever it's on steam yeah uh, basically you you become the oh, the general manager of a, a baseball team and 
get to manage like all of their minor leagues and then their major league staff and, and you can do trades and stuff and it's it's really good it's kind of like the, sort of thing. A, yeah i was gonna say it's kind of like the, the one of the games where it's like this is a real job but do you want to do it for fun <laughs> is it like is it kind of like eve online but for sports fans it's like kind a lot of, of data yeah, management like, yeah yeah so you get to like look at stats and and kind of make trades and you can have a better better coaches will help bring your players along but they'll also have tendencies to like old school style versus um like more tradi- like more traditional style versus more um modern style of of thought processes for cool. choosing players and that sort of thing that's really interesting. can you can you blow up your enemies like in eve online you can with home runs Okay, I like it. Put them on blast on social media or something like that. The other thing about games and seasons is that different games have sort of uh, exploited seasonal backdrops to their advantage. So yeah, I don't know if you all remember the original Division, but that game came out. Yeah, it came out in like yeah late November, Christmas. Yeah, yeah, but it was like at it was supposed to be like the Black Friday was whenever in the story this stuff happened. Exactly. You know that's interesting because. You still see remnants of that in Division Two because there's still all the Christmas stuff up yeah, and around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's whenever like everything went to hell. Um, there's a couple other games that did that. Uh, Left for Dead, no, not Left for Dead. Dead Rising. Oh yeah. Four. Dead Rising Four took place at a mall in Christmas time, or like a t- small town that had a mall, but it was also Christmas time. So like lots of the things that you like, the weapons you have, are based around like Christmas weapons mm. and things like that. Like you can get a Santa Claus that. Use chainsaw hands or something like that. Um, I think uh, Fallout 4 did Halloween. Mm-hmm. Um, Batman Arkham Origins, I think, was around Christmas as well. That was Christmas. Christmas. Yep. yep. I, think, I think it's really interesting um, to have a game like that where it's kind of trying to ground itself in the reality of the people playing it by <laughs> mimicking the season. Um, and mm. I think to a large degree it worked. Like, I remember really loving the city in the original division and thinking like how uh immersive it felt and and looking back on it i it doesn't actually the mechanics aren't deep enough to make it feel super immersive like it's not like a breath of the wild where you just feel feel immersed because you can change everything right you mm-hmm. you i felt immersed in that game because i wanted to feel like it was you know christmas black friday and that game gave me what i wanted in that moment for sure kind of brings it back to what we said earlier about playing games during certain times of the year where I feel weird playing a game where everything's at, like Christmassy and it's not Christmas. <laughs> yeah. You know, like whenever I'm like the Batman Arkham Origins, it kind of it, it, I don't know. It like makes my body feel all weird because it's <laughs> like I'm not supposed to be. It's like it's not Christmas time. It's the middle of summer. It's so hot. What am I supposed to do? I don't there's no snow. There's no snow. <laughs> See, that's why I loved it, because I, I when it came out when i remember playing it anyway we were i was living in la and i wanted like i wanted snow i wanted cold and i couldn't get it except in the division so that was good where is the snow speaking of of the winter and video gaming a thing that i have often felt is that um especially in the winter when there's just less sunlight in general it's really easy to to feel seasonal affective disorder Uh or to feel Mm -hmm. seasonally affected um if you're playing too many video games have you guys sensed that as well I know yeah, but I embrace mean. it. <laughs> but I, I'm like Chris, yeah. Like Chris I embrace like, that. I was born in the dark. I'm molded by it. <laughs> yeah, I totally take advantage of that. Like, the darkness. It I gets dark earlier, so you go in and you quit doing stuff outside and you go play games. You do you, like that's more time to do indoor stuff. Maybe that's why I play more games in the in the winter because the days are shorter. But yeah, I'm like Chris. I embrace that. I take advantage of that. Hmm. I don't know. I have to be careful. Like if I spend too much time inside in the winter, I can really get like a little bit sad. You don't have winter. You're in California. Yeah. Well, we don't want to. Such thing as winter. It's not, it's not, don't not real winter. It's not real I winter. I live in Pennsylvania. You son of a but bitch. The, but the sun still does set earlier. I don't know. Ah, um, uh, you me, me. butthole. It's so <laughs> hot out, still. <laughs> so we talked about. <laughs> Oh no, I had to wear a light jacket today. <laughs> it was 60 degrees today, it was so cold. Oh no, it's so freezing. Oh, it's all true. It's funny yeah. because it's funny because it gets hotter here, I feel like, than it does in California most For of the sure. time. Yeah. And, yeah. and it gets, and it gets colder. colder. Yes. It is true. 
ridiculous. Yeah. Um, How hot is it where you are right now, Dan? It's uh, heat index today. I think it was like 104 degrees. Oh uh, man, something let me, like that. Let me look up the heat. The, the ye old heat index. Ye old. It's got a D at we the end of it. It's, it's just a, it's just a guy. It's just a guy in the corner going. <laughs> it's hot as balls. <laughs> you know. uh, yeah, heat index value is around 110. Good yeah. God, yeah. yes, it sucks it outside. Too hot. Too hot. So we t- we talked a lot of a lot of uh, winter games and a couple of summer things. Are there like fall mm-hmm. and spring games that we feel? Um, Oh man, I kind of hmm. the like the fall game for me is is wow. That's um, what I was gonna say. Really, because of Brewfest. I love Brewfest. Oh, yeah. That's all. right. That's, um, I don't know why, but it it just it's my favorite. Like one of my favorite events in a game. Hmm. Interesting. That's interesting. Because it's not like a real thing. It's it's like it's Oktoberfest in a video game. But you, <laughs> right. But also, it's like right now we're not really playing. Are you still playing WoW right now? No. No. So it's like what. What's it? What's it all for? You know, I don't know, but that's hard to. What are any that's video games for? Like, yeah. for having fun. For having right. fun. Right. There you go. You're not, you're not so acquiring you, experience. You go, you go back for Brewfest, <laughs> but you don't go back for the dark, uh, dark hollow, dark moon, dark fair? moon fair. No, which no, I think no, it's no. a spring uh, thing. All isn't Hallows it? Eve. It's all Hallows Eve. Hmm. Anybody else? That fall? one's good too, though. Hmm. Fall spring thing. Let's see. Spring. Those are when I play my sports games. Like fall comes around, I kind of get into like I, I might want to try Madden. <laughs> you know, or no. spring comes around and every year and this year I finally got it. I'm like, I want to I want to play the show. I want to play MLB the show. Do you, um, you can. Do you I get like the, the, I get, better space I get the itches for sports games around that time. And then weirdly, I guess Call of Duty is kind of a fall type thing for me. I don't know what it is about that, but something about Call of Duty feels like a fall game to me. That's I, have no, I have no basis for explaining that whatsoever. Bodies fall down. But because it's. Bodies fall down. But also, Ian, Ian just said it releases then. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like I usually guess that's why. You know, it's everyone's playing it, so it's on your brain. Well, yeah. it, your brain. Uh, on the brain. It's funny how that works. It's on my brain. I got that Call of Duty on my brain. They've done a good job of establishing like times for that because it's not like you can release that whenever the hell you want. It it's not attached to a real. There's like no Call of Duty season in the real world. Like you know. Yeah. Um, but you're right. It absolutely has a fall feel to it. I feel like Destiny is a fall feel for me too. For some reason, like I remember yeah. playing Destiny, it released and Destiny, Destiny 2 pretty hard in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. So just. First person shooters yeah. in fall. Our That's what we do. Yep. Yeah. We all play FPSs in fall. It's what fall we do. Fall person shooters. Fall, fall person, person shooters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, I think. And then, ooh, sorry. It, no, I was gonna, no, you go. Gonna you go, rap. you son of a bitch. I was going to wrap if that's okay. Yeah, wrap it. Yeah, wrap before you do. I want to hear you rap. Christmas time. <laughs> yo, I'm yo, my name is Dan. Oh, I, uh, I was Yeah, no, rap. you go first. Yeah, I thought. You, you were doing that. Here, I'll do that. <laughs> Uh. That's the end of the first half of the show. If you didn't good, now you know. And we're done, so we're wrapping it up. Here is Chris, who's got a drink from his cup. <laughs> All right. Word. Uh, I'm, I, I hope that doesn't make the final cut. We'll see you in the I'm second not. half. I'm if you're still here, if you decided to stay after that, we'll see you good in the on, second good half. Good on you, I guess. No, it's staying. It's in. You got to keep it in there. Line it up the right way. Hey, everybody. Uh, Ian here from the Game Brew Podcast. Oh, my gosh, that harp. Um, (laughs) This is so good. Listen to this. It just make, makes me feel great. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to say that I hope everyone's summer is going well and maybe you're outdoors, maybe you're baking, maybe you're drinking some tea, who knows, but whatever you're doing, you're enjoying the podcast and for that, we thank you. Um, if you'd like to support us, the best way is to spread Game Brew love by sharing us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also sign up for our Humble Bundle discount using the link bit.ly slash gamebrew. Um, if you want, you can send us topics and we'll talk about things that you suggest on the show. Uh, or the best thing, really great thing to do is just to leave us a review on iTunes or wherever get your podcasts. It's a huge help. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoy this wonderfully orchestrated tune here in the middle of the show. And, uh, here we go with the second half. Hell 
Hello and welcome back to the second half of the Game Brew Podcast. Uh, we're here. We're drinking some seasonal beers. I'm about to crack open uh, this downtown brown ale. <laughs> Can I just tell you how much nice. I love the name downtown brown? That's a uh, who is that? Downtown Bobby Which, Brown. Downtown. Oh, it's stinky. <laughs> oh. Uh, it smells like, uh, it smells musty. It smells like something went wrong here. Maybe this is just a, not a good beer. How old is it? Um, it's from a Lost Coast Brewery. It doesn't have a date on it, but I literally just bought it at the store right now, so it can't be that old. Let's see what it tastes like. Um, so this is my this is my fall pick. I think brown ales are a really great beer for the fall. They're Obviously, nutty. You, we could have gone with like an Oktoberfest, right? Because Oktoberfest happens in the in the fall. But yeah, brown ales are nutty, and they're just there's something about them that makes me think about trees and about um uh you know that cold sort of smell in the air even though it's not really cold on the east coast obviously there's never cold smell in the air here it just smells like exhaust and uh pollution yeah and smug and (laughs) it reeks of pretension (laughs) yeah i'm doing a i'm doing a I guess well, I call it a spring, like a transitional one. So it's either spring or fall. I don't know. It's hard to hard to place. But Victory Dirt Wolf, mm. I'm drinking right mm. now, which is it's a double IPA. It's pretty strong, but it's a it's good. It reminds me of transition. It makes you really the IPA makes you think about the fall because IPAs to me are very springy. Yeah, well, no spring. No. I said it's, it's again. It's transitional because this is usually like one of the ones that I drink to heavy. It's like a heavy ish beer, so you can you drink two and you're like real feeling good. Mm. But, but yeah, feeling I mean, I guess it's spring more than anything. Okay. And Chris, I am drinking Bad Elf Winter's Ale, not to be confused with Mad Elf, which is a very potent beer from Trogs mm-hmm. up in Hershey. How is Bad Elf? Mm-hmm. Bad Elf is <coughs> not bad. It's a golden ale. Uh, um, so it's 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 pretty good. I wouldn't say it's like the best shit ever, but it hold on. That's interesting that it is it is named for a very Christmassy thing and it's not like a porter or a stout or like a strong ale. It's kind of what you expect in the winter, right? Yeah, I mean it's a six percent um it's a festive golden ale, I'm sorry. It's festive. Um, Ooh, it's, festive. Yeah. it's festive. It does have like a little bit of of sweetness to it so i guess that's kind of where it gets some of its uh festiveness um but yeah i mean it's, it's not particularly strong it does have kind of that you know german pilsners have a very distinct flavor mm-hmm. it kind of has yep, that yes. flavor i don't know exactly how to call it but it's a little bit bitter it's pretty good dude ian that is dark nice yeah the, the this this brown ale, look how murky that looks it is i just see pickles <laughs> you're just holding up pickles, man. The, I don't know what you're doing. I do like the amount of head on there it. and the head's a really nice consistency. You see that foaminess? I do I do want to illustrate to the listeners exactly what we're seeing. Ian's just holding up a jar of pickles. It's not and a, we don't know. This is my <laughs> custom game brew drinking jar. See, you have a game brew mug. It's stenciled and everything. It's a game brew it's jar. Kind of jar. No, that one's stenciled too. Yeah, this is. I wish I had one of those. It's great. There's yeah. lots of room to get air into the beer, which makes. Oh, it is that? Oh, better. cool. Nice. Okay. This one, it, mine looks really pretty. It's nice and gold. Yeah, Yours does. You should take a, a photograph of that and put it on the. Oh, website. I need to get the mood lighting. Hold on. And oh, Wilhelm. Oh, hold on. Chris is turning on the mood lighting. That means we need to turn up the slow jams. <laughs> oh, the slow. No, no. Yeah. no. Down, 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 down. Wow, wow. Again, this is an audio medium, so nothing is nothing is translating. Just want to let you know that. Uh, but I'm singing. I know. We wish you would stop. <laughs> um, the there's a reason you went to school for tuba, oh, not for singing. Let me just tell you. So let me just tell you that. Will, are you drink? What are you drinking, man? Yeah. What's your second half beer? I accidentally apparently drank the last one because I went to go get it and I turned it around and all that's left Turn is this nasty every now it's a and then chocolate, there's just nasty it's a spicy chocolate, chocolate shut up Chris beer. Beer. Son of a bitch. I am not drinking the spicy <laughs> chocolate Mexican beer again I'm not doing it, it's terrible oh, uh, man, but what I, I had last night chocolate. that I thought I still had some of today is uh, it's a local brewery from Station Brew um, oh what is it it was a, it was a cream ale of some hmm. kind okay. it's like a vanilla mm-hmm thing and uh that was gonna be my winter one so i had my winter one last night anything creamy and vanilla e is mm. winter for i can me. see that i can yeah. see that working I can it's kind of like an eggnoggy i was gonna feel, say you know? do you do you ever think that it would be possible to mix beer with eggnog and have it be good no beer nog yeah like a michelada except for winter 
<laughs> I know what we're well, trying you know in what? December. <laughs> I was going to say, stout. in three months, we'll figure well, it out. It's stout. Oh, it's a stout. Guys. Business plan. This is going to happen. Oh, my God. Call Anheuser-Busch. <laughs> Call Anheuser-Busch on the phone. <laughs> All right. They're not answering. I'm sorry. My assistant's off today. Yeah. Uh, that's too bad. Is that Johnny? Damn interns. <laughs> so... Uh, one thing we were kicking around the other day in the Discord is that it feels like there's a big difference between when we take direct control over characters in, in a game and when we take indirect control over characters in a game. So to sort of set the stage, um, like Call of Duty, where you are first person and every single input relates exactly to an action that happens in the game would be an example of direct control of, of a character. Whereas in games like The Sims or um, Dwarf Fortress or Prison Simulator, something like that, um, we have less direct control over the characters on the screen. Um, and so the question we wanted to pose was, how does this idea of control translate into our relationships with the characters? And does having more direct control make you more connected or less connected and same for um indirect control uh personally i have found the less direct control i have over a character the more emotionally connected i feel to that character which is kind of interesting mm, i would agree to that i disagree but like so give an example like yeah for an example something like dwarf fortress right you I would boot it up. I'd have these little like dwarves running around. And even in those games, I wouldn't even name them, but I, I felt a connection to them because they're like, their personalities felt different. And they were like, there was always that one dwarf that just like never got anything done. He fucking hated him because he was useless. And then you had, you know, a couple other dwarves who are living their lives, doing their best. But like the fact that I didn't have control over it allowed me to sort of project a personality onto the AI that was a little more, more active and therefore i was able to view them and appreciate them as a character um whereas in games like first person games like call of duty or even a bioshock um even though the plot might be compelling i never felt connected to those characters that <coughs> i was controlling because they were just extensions of myself that's weird yeah I yeah. think you're a little weird. I feel like that's a common <laughs> thing with with first person shooters i mean there's exceptions to the rule but you're sort of placed into an environment as an observer rather than taking uh, what's the word I'm looking for like a a holistic view of everything including your character and when you're looking through the eyes of your own character there's less I don't, I don't know I don't know how to phrase this but I agree with Ian you're, you're just like a passive observer even if you can run around go up down left right climb ladders and do things it you don't see your own development as much because you're always looking through your own eyes so one of the things you mentioned Bioshock and I kind of want to I'm going to bring that up a little bit because Bioshock has some of the ones where I did connect with the character on a, an emotional basis because one it's first person like in the original Bioshock there's obviously the there's the would you kindly moment which uh kind of while this is also like a Spoiler alert for, for, for it's Bioshock, like, for, like a, a, for almost Bioshock, 15 year old game. Was, game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, just in case there's going to be the one person who's like, you son of a bitch. No. Uh, but the the there's the the like this code phrase that makes you do whatever the person says is they say, would you kindly? And then you do it. So it kind of like puts this whole I know whenever I was playing that it was like this illusion of like control and that like fucked with my brain a little bit because I was like oh my god I thought that I was like doing this to be the hero but instead I'm not um and then well I was gonna say so Bioshock I think is an interesting example because I also felt invested and moved in that game by the plot and by certain mm -hmm. other characters in that game I remember feeling either like afraid of them or like um invested in their survival right but I didn't I never felt a connection with that person who was the protagonist, I think because of what Will's talking about, you never, you don't really get a chance to see them. Uh, you don't really <clears> get a chance to experience so much of their lives through your own lens. And, and there are maybe one or two opportunities in the game where you kind of have like little flashbacks, but for the most part, it's like your actions making an effect on the world and those actions right there's like that morality meter where kind of like you either mm -hmm. suck the souls out of the little sisters or you like set them free or something i don't exactly remember mm -hmm. what the mechanic is but you were making those choices and so it feels like instead of a character it feels like you and so that makes me feel less connected to them as a character because they don't have a de any definable traits 
on their own. Well, and that's that's a good point. And that's kind of the point I was going to make is that it's not that you're playing a character. The character is you in Bioshock. Right. Um, in Skyrim, the character is you. It's not it's not like you're coming into a pre-made character mm -hmm. um, that has a story, has a background. You you create that background for yourself. So I can understand why there would be less connection because, well, not less connection, but just less of an emotional connection, I guess, because it's yourself. Like, you, you're already connected. So, yeah. so you're, you're making those decisions. So I think it's a little different. I, there's a game that I've been playing recently that kind of tries to do both called Kingdom Come Deliverance. Mm. Um, so you're playing a character, Henry, who's a peasant, and you're terrible at everything. So you kind of go through your journey of trying to get better at stuff. But, like, in cutscenes, it's third person. So you right. still see yourself... You're, you're not yourself. You are Henry, who's a shitty peasant that doesn't know how to do anything at the <laughs> beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and um, kind of going through the struggle with him, which is a little different than kind of like the Skyrim or Bioshock thing where you're just playing that person. You are that person. Yeah, I want to yeah. give Will and Dan a chance to jump in here, but I do want to come back to cutscenes um, because I think yeah. it's an interesting point. We're all dancing around it, and it occurred to me somewhere through all that. Um, for first person games, it's so easy because it is an extension of you. I get invested in others, other characters like so other much characters more are. and engaged yeah. in that than I do with myself. But when I can see myself and it's well written and well designed, you know, that's when I have a little bit more, you know, engagement in, in who I am, you know, who my character is and, and identification and emotional attachment to my character and and that, well, that's that's kind of the thing I was going to say, too, because I brought up the first Bioshock to bring up the third one, Bioshock Infinite, where mm. in, where in that it's very it's not like you're you you know, your character and your character is very important to the story. And you build this relationship with Elizabeth over the course of the game. And like, that's a good as point. That, it's yeah. like it's different because it's like, OK, it's not about me. You're playing it's Booker. About, you're, yeah, you're playing Booker, who actually has a personality, kind of, and and that's like. <clears throat> or are you arguing that he doesn't, Ian? Well, I, yeah, you're I do want to push back a little bit because I think I think that even though Booker is like the shell that you're put inside of, pretty much the only salient point about Booker is well, they're like two. Like one, he's not like a good person, and two, he's not trying to get close to Elizabeth for like good reasons. Like he's like trying to capture her or something, right? No. Did you like, ever play this game? Yeah, I played I played Bioshock Infinite and beat it. Did but you didn't, skip all the cutscenes? Did you skip all the cutscenes? Well, didn't I someone don't know like, who I am. Didn't I don't someone know like, why I'm here. <laughs> all I know <laughs> is I must, I must kill. kill. <laughs> 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 Didn't someone send Booker to like bring her back somewhere or to capture her or something? Well, he's a private. Well, no. Super spoiler alert. The whole plot of the game is that you are sent to that place to bring her back. But yeah, then you that's learn. What I just said. But then you learn that the person who sent you there to get her back is you because you're her father from the future who is trying to pull her back and save her. Okay, like yeah, even no, though, that, that flew yeah. way over my head. <laughs> and then it turns out that this is, there's, uh, that's why there, there's, there's always a man, there's always a tower, there's always a, do you remember okay. any of that from the end of the game? I remember the end of the game being like, what? You okay. Kind of like, you're the dude pretending to, to be the dude being another this dude. This guy's just another dude. dude. Well, I think, I think my point still stands in spite of the fact that I completely missed the plot for Bioshock Infinite. And that, <laughs> it, and that <laughs> Even though I'm wrong, I'm right. <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying that it's the relationship between you and Elizabeth that's the driving <clears> force <throat> of the game, not necessarily the personality of Booker. Uh, no, that's it's the still... Driving, that's the driving... Point. It's a bit Where, of both. Whereas a game like uh, The Last of Us, that mm, main yeah. character's personality and drives are much more important to to the arc of the game. Absolutely. And, and, and so that's sort of represented visually by the fact that that's a third person game where you're always seeing that character and identifying with him that way. Um, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, Chris. I think that's a good point, too, is that I think that being having the third person perspective versus first person allows you to connect more with that character because you're seeing that character you're not being that character you're you're controlling that per, that character's movements but you're not you're not that character you're basically going through a story with that character yeah you're you're riding inside of their body i think an important component to that is uh when it's either masked really well and you don't realize that you only have you know two options you know like good or evil 
on or off sort of thing. But mm-hmm. in The Last of Us, for example, you know, different things happen depending on decisions you make, of course, but there's it feels like there's X number of different things that could happen in different situations. Whether or not there's one or two, you play that game and you feel like, oh man, I wonder what would have happened if I did this, this, or this. And it does a good job of making you feel like you're an observer, not directly choosing good or evil paths. So it kind of takes you out of the controller seat, or at least I feel like a little bit. Whereas a game like Mass Effect, I'm going to be Renegade or Paragon. Mm -hmm. Whereas in this, it's this happened and i f- you know feel for this character yeah like there's yeah. it's 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 gray area it might not be yeah yeah it's it's well designed and you don't feel like you're making there's a another decision. game like that that netflix is coming out with a tv series for soon involving a very pale white-haired guy that mm-hmm. hunts monsters mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. that did a really good job about that too especially the bloody baron quest where everything was very gray and right it it, it made him more human the the main character in that that game. Hmm. Yeah, I do want to kick it back to cutscenes one more time, um, because cutscenes are a time in games when generally we have very little or no control over characters during those cutscenes, and yet those are the moments, oftentimes in games, where we're supposed to feel the most emotionally. And so I think there's a connection here to be made between the amount of control that you have and the emotional resonance or connection with the characters and the storyline. Hmm. Hmm. I think that comes back to design again. You know, I mean, like I'm playing through Final Fantasy seven again and, you know, cut scenes on that. You you play this character who has pre-written dialogue, you know, and that was back in the era of cut scenes are your engagement moment for a lot of things, you know, especially when you're a kid. But during cut scenes, there's really not a lot that happens with with cloud and that hmm. it's still always focused on other people. It's not designed to get you emotionally attached to cloud in that game, in my opinion. But it's also, but that's also the cut a plot. Scenes, the cutscenes. Yeah, but that's also kind of a plot point too in that game is that you're not really supposed to be connected to Cloud because Cloud himself is not is emotionally disconnected. Like he's not a yeah. per, like he's barely a person. Yeah. He has somebody else's memories, that kind of stuff. That's why the Aerith moment in that is so like, and that's kind of why Huge. in the cutscene, that's the only way that could have happened. You couldn't have a boss fight where spoiler alert, Aerith dies um, <laughs> because. Uh, <laughs> Can we talk about Aerith versus? Eris real quick uh, it was sure a her typo. name is Eris no in the English version it was but that was uh, a typo yeah. when they translated everything somebody put Eris really? instead of Aerith yeah no yeah. way yeah it's supposed okay. to be Eris it was Mike so, Tyson translating yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying this guy's here he's got these fucky hair and he's got this friend named Aerith yeah I think he's saying Eris <laughs> sorry there. So. sorry Mike Tyson if you're a listener <laughs> No, Mike Tyson, if you're listening, we're, we're not sorry. Come on the podcast and yell at us, please. <laughs> just don't punch because, us. Just don't punch just us. Don't we'll punch, punch, us. We'll punch or Chris, but ears. don't punch anybody else. Um, but no, but that's like a huge, like you couldn't do that because I still, I, I forget, I was reading, I think it might have been a Reddit post, but somebody was asking like, I'm playing Final Fantasy VII for the first time. I already know all of this stuff. Like I know the, about the Aerith moment where she yeah. gets killed by Sephiroth. Should, will I still have an emotional reaction to it whenever I'm even though I know that it happens? And then they came back later. They were like, I still did because yeah. I was connected mm-hmm. to the character because they did a good job of like making her number yeah. one like a very like good person and like everything that she does is like it makes her very like you are very um, um, empathetic towards her yeah. so whenever that I, moment happens it's just like all of a sudden you're like oh my god oh and my I, god and, and i want to make two points here number one i want to note that that moment where Aerith dies happens in a cutscene. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it does and number two, uh, the other point that I want to make is that you don't have any control over that moment, right? Yeah, so right. So if, if they had given you a choice and been like, okay, sacrifice Aerith or sacrifice Tifa, I don't think that it would have been as emotionally resonant. But because right. you didn't have a choice, <clears throat> it's a more emotionally resonant. Once again, uh, the, lack of, the lack of your personal agency you over something it. can okay. make it seem more emotionally resonant hmm. or more connected to those characters. Interesting. I guess that's in The Last of Us. That's the same kind of way, too, where it's like even though you're. But he, like Joel's de- Joel, Joel's decision at the end, like to not um, again. Spoiler. God damn it. Spoiler yeah, alerts. We're gonna, uh, we'll do. I'll do like a spoiler at the half point. But there's a uh, but at the end to to not 
sacrifice Ellie for like the for the good of everyone Mm -hmm. is like you don't have a choice in that. But you also like feel with the character in that moment where it's like, no, he doesn't really have a choice in that because I would like he's built this connection with her and that kind of stuff. So it's interesting. I also um, b- would be remiss if I didn't bring up the XCOM games in which I have always mm-hmm. felt intimately connected to the characters in that game. Um, Disagree. Because of the sense of permanency and randomness, uh, like, again, a lack of total control over the game where there's this really strong element of chance um, hmm. makes them feel more precious. And then when they die, I feel very sad. Also, I feel very sad most of the time when like a will my captain will or my or my sergeant chris dies but whenever private dan kicks the bucket i'm just like yeah it's private dan yeah, it's, it's fine, fine. there's like <laughs> a million <laughs> private dance right that's Red like the one that you keep days. putting in every time where it's just like oh yeah there's this private dan uh theta because we've gone through all the other ones before <laughs> he's a red shirt yeah <laughs> i was like let's do this <laughs> um no Tell but i feel like i love <laughs> I feel like in those games, I'm really connected to those characters because I'm afraid to lose them. It's it's like it's like making your friends in Oregon Trail. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. It's like, damn it. Dan died of dysentery again. (laughs) How did you break your leg? It's been one day. (laughs) Listen, guys, if you uh, if you we will play a live action version role playing of Oregon Trail. If you uh, get Oregon Trail, Oregon Trail, Oregon Trail. Oh, that would be hilarious. Uh, I will run. So I'm a dungeon master. If you guys want, if you get if we get up to like, I, I don't know how many how many likes do we have on the facebook right now a bunch a bunch we have to get up to a buttload up to a buttload yeah well we have 438 likes on facebook if we get up to 500 i'll run a i'll run a campaign of uh when we get up to 500 when we get to 500 i'll run a campaign of uh of a dungeons and dragons-esque thing where we play uh the oregon trail but with zombies super that would be sweet (laughs) hilarious and awesome that would be sweet (laughs) So good. You know, there's a game called the Oregon Trail, right? Yes. Not, yeah, not Oregon, but Oregon. Yeah, the Oregon Trail. That's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the said. zombie yeah. one. Yeah. It's like cool. Death Road to Canada. Yeah, it's, it's a little, well. I love that game little, too. But it's I, so Death Road to Canada is really great. It's fabulous. Okay, uh, well, I think that's going to be it for our discussion of uh, whether or not direct and indirect power has an influence on your emotional connection with characters. If you agree, wait, wait what? Can we can we say yes or no? Can we just can we just end oh. it with a does it? You know? Okay, like we'll go through. Yeah, just be just like give a give a like a will. Does yes. indirect or direct control make you feel more connected to a character? Uh. If I had to pick one, I would say indirect because you get emotionally charged for that sort of thing. But it comes down to how well either mechanic is intertwined with the story progression for me. But Damn. indirect. I'm going indirect because you swayed me. Yes, Chris. <laughs> I'm going to say that direct third person is the most influential. Ooh, direct third person. Specificity. <laughs> because you uh, need to read that character. Yeah. Okay. A lot of that's that's interesting. Separates well, I the think, id. I think there's also a discussion to be had about um, perspective here and different, like how different camera views. Uh, well, that was that was originally interesting. what I, I started this conversation on. Yeah. When we were talking about it in, in uh, mm-hmm. on Discord. Ended up talking about controls, but maybe we'll probably definitely swing back around to that conversation about camera angles. So yeah, um, we're done. <laughs> for that and much more, <laughs> uh, tune in for episode 61. But for episode 60, that's gonna be it for us so say good night everybody good say good night everybody, everybody. So it's because you can't, I mean, come on, you can't just go directly from, oh no, my pi- it looks like your pipes are a little clogged. You might need me to <laughs> irrigate them. Like, you can't go right to that <laughs> just to have, like, the, the jaw, like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll come up with a you know different what? Actually, name, yeah, actually, I'm wrong. You can just, you can go directly to that. You're, um, but it's not going to be as good. You know, I stepped away for, like, three minutes tops. <laughs>